Um, I mean, I was with Gerard only a, a short time, but um, I mean, some of the, the impact that he had on me, not only on the pitch, but off the field, was um, was a massive reason why, obviously, I left Sunderland to go to Aston Villa. I mean, the, the team was, was good at the time, but just speaking to him, I only spoke to him before I signed for about 10 minutes, and I knew that I wanted to play for him. I mean, you're talking about a man there that, as you said, knew his, his tactics, knew his football, but he knew, he knew me at times on the pitch probably better than I knew myself. Um, as in regards to the way I played and, and what I brought to the team. So, I mean, the, the, the Wolves have lost a, a great, great man, not just a great manager and a great tactician, but a great person as well. But you, you just knew that when he, when he said something, like you, you had to listen. He, he was one of the managers where, you know in yourself sometimes, when certain managers say certain things, you, you can kind of buy into it and you go, well, does he really believe what he's saying? But everything that Gerard was saying, I mean, you talk about a guy being at the very, very top, everything that he said, I, I, I believed in it, and, and as I said, it, it was just—it was kind of scary to me that not only, as you said there, about discipline-wise, but even little things on the pitch where he'd just tell me to do certain things a little bit differently, and it made a massive difference. And you know, I'd come away from certain training sessions or after games thinking, well, "What have I been doing for the last ten years? Why, why am I only learning how to do this now?" And that was just a sign of a, a great, great man. Some of the conversations I had with him after that—I mean, I remember one of the first things he's kind of said to me was, um, "He was like, listen, I, I guarantee you." Um, you come into this team, you'll score goals. It's, it's, it's impossible for you not to score goals um, with, the, with the creativity and the way that you play. Um, and it, it was kind of funny because I was like, okay, like most managers would say that, but when I looked around the team, he was right. If I get in the right positions, I'll certainly score. But one thing that always used to stick in my mind was how desperately he, he for whatever reason, he wanted me to wear the number nine shirt. And at the time, the number nine was taken. I can't remember who, I don't know if John Carew was still there and he had the, the number nine, but he was so adamant um, that he wanted me to have that number, which is the reason I started wearing 39 when I first went to Villa, because he was like, it was so important to him that I had some form of nine on my back. Why, I don't know. He never really explained to me the reason for it, but it was it was so important. And I've always said this, that, yeah, I might have scored more goals elsewhere, but that period I had Gerard from January to the end of the season, as far as all-round game, is the best I've ever played in my career. Yeah, I mean, even even after I um I signed and I went off and done certain bits, and even after I'd signed and I played my first game, like and he'd see my parents, like for instance, like he'd always ask, "Oh, how's your mum? How's your dad?" He'd call my dad into the office um, when I was when I wasn't about, like if my dad had come up after a game, call him into the office, had a conversation with him, "How's Darren doing? Is he enjoying himself here?" He knew my my mum's name, obviously Shirley. To how she, how's everything at home? How you feeling? Okay, how have you settled in? I mean, that's what I'm saying. You're right. He, he it was just the little, the little details, as I think Danny Murphy was talking about it earlier. It, it, it didn't really care. It wasn't about just on the training pitch. Like what, if I trained well or played well, he wanted to know what was going on when I left the training ground. Like what did you do? You're new to the area. How have you settled in? What have you been up to? Do you need anything? And as I said, he was just a great, great man. You know what I mean? At, t at the time, I, I thought he took a lot of unjustified stick because a lot of people were saying, obviously they were upset about Martin O'Neill, what I can understand about. But you talk about, you've got a guy called Gerard Julio who was superb. And as I said, I had one conversation with him. And I knew that it, it was where I wanted to play, but it was just it was just the kind of detail that he had on my own personal game. Like it, it, it sounds easy, someone saying to you, oh, you come here, you score goals. But he just made me feel so relaxed. And even before the first game, I can remember it like it was yesterday. We had Manchester City, obviously, one, I think they were obviously super power, had all these great players. And he kind of, I was nervous before the game, cut nervous, a little bit obviously record fee, people talking about it. And he just basically come to the back of the bus where I was sitting and just said, listen, relax, if you don't, if you don't score today, doesn't really matter. You don't score, I bought you because I believe that you're going to score goals for this club. So you're not under any pressure, so just relax. And as I said, I went on that period there from January to the end of the season, playing the best football and obviously scoring a lot of goals in that period as well. He, he, as I said, he made me see things um, so differently. I mean, there's, there's even times where I, I remember as a, as a centre forward, and you'll know this as well, where you, if the fullback's got the ball, he'd want you to, most managers, to give the, the fullback an angle, they'd want you to run the channel. And I remember it was one of my very first training sessions. I did that. Um, I think Luke Young had the ball and he clipped it down the channel and I ran out there and he practically stopped the whole training session and said, like, what are you doing? And I basically said, well, I've obviously got to run out there to give Luke a, a, an angle. He's got no one to pass to. And he basically said, listen, I didn't buy you to run out in the channels. I bought you to score goals. So let them, you've got a midfielder, a wide man and the fullback out there. That's three players. I don't need you going out there. Like when you play for me, you play within the, the width of the 18 yard box and that's where you score your goals. I don't want to see you running out there again. And it was just like, whoa, okay. Like it was just little details like that, which made me, I thought a better player.